link with Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious, he is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a foal, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot of Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be cut off, and he shall command his peace to all the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you in double. The word of the Lord. Reading from Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can do what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be the law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my innermost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will well rescue me from the body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 11th chapter. Jesus spoke to the crowd saying, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things, you have, been, all things have been handed over to me by, by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all of you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated and the children will come over for a message. Nice to thank you. Okay, good. I've got a question for you. Actually, I've got a couple. You ever done something that you weren't supposed to and you knew you weren't supposed to do it, but you went and did it anyhow? 
okay, you won't get in trouble here. Just say, if that's the case, how about like, my mom or dad says, those cookies, those are for later. Oh, this is people right now. Those cookies are for later. Next thing you know, your hand's just walking across the table, and it grabs them, and the next thing you know, it's in your mouth. But you knew you weren't supposed to, right? Sometimes we do things that we aren't supposed to, and we know that we're not supposed to, and we want to do the right thing, but then also we still do the wrong thing. It happens, doesn't it, sometimes? Maybe brother says something to sister, and the sister goes, ooh, and says something nasty back, but you know that you're not supposed to. Your friend says something to you, and you say something nasty back, and you know you're not supposed to. Right? It happens. But Jesus says, there's another way. There's another way. And come to Him because He'll He'll make it easier for you. He wants to make it easier for you. All you do is think about Him before you respond. Before you let your hand fall up and get those cookies. Because He wants to make it easier for you. Much easier for you. And that's what we hear today in the gospel. It's about this yoke. And a yoke is something that actually people put on horses to help them hold things. And what He's saying is His yoke, that's it's really light. It's really easy to live by His ways if you just stay focused on that. So that's what He asks for us to do is to stay focused. Not go after those cookies when we're not supposed to. And not say those things that we want to say, but we're not supposed to. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks. Thanks for your Son who you sent down. We give you thanks for the the light yoke that He offers us. We give you thanks for His humble heart. We give you thanks because when we follow these things and look towards these things, we know that we are behaving the way that you ask us to behave, but also behaving the way that we truly want to be, truly want to be, even though sometimes we don't always get there. We lift up all these things to you, to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I need some help. Because now I'm down here before on my knees. Who's going to help me out? <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. So what if we follow Jesus? And we leave our families, as Jesus has said for some of them. Or what if we let the dead very dead. There are so many what ifs that we are encountering. So many what ifs that Jesus helps us to encounter. And in today's reading, in Matthew, it's no different. What if we recognize that flute and we begin to dance? Jesus is knocking at the door all the time. Jesus is in the Spirit, and the Spirit is in God, and God is in Jesus. They are knocking at the door all the time with opportunities of what ifs. What if? What if I trust? What if I truly trust the Lord that everything will be all right, no matter what? That's the question, isn't it? Are we trusting? Can we trust in that? We're always presented with a choice. A choice of what if we do, and what if we don't. As I was preparing this sermon, I had received an email. And it was pretty disturbing. And I knew how I wanted to respond. But I also knew that I needed to pray about it and have patience about it. So on one hand, I had this way that I wanted to respond. And I had this other way that I knew I should respond. And the way I wanted to respond had some very, very colorful language. <laughs> now, I have been known to write those emails and then hit cancel. Because that way I can get it out. And as I wrote this email, I also knew the consequences of writing this email, this response. I knew it hurt me. It could hurt my family. It could hurt the person that I responded to. It could do all sorts of hurt. So I had the old self say, yeah, do this, because it's going to feel really good. <laughs> and I didn't want it to. 
So they also had the new self saying, no, Doug, you don't do this. This is not how you behave. And I said, you know, this is not how I want to be. But I also don't think this is how Jesus wants us to be, how Jesus wants us to respond. So the only thing I really had at my disposal was prayer and patience. I found myself with clenched teeth, with a sore neck, with a sore jaw, and a headache just begging me to come on. So I said, what if? What if I relied upon the ability given to me? The ability to speak to God in prayer. So I want to respond in my own way, the self-centered about me. Yet, I want to respond at the same time to this what if. I want to respond to this new person, centered on Christ, thinking about all of God's children. But I know that if I responded the way I wanted to, it would feel good. But I also knew the other would feel good too. Paul in Romans letters, they struggles with the same ideas. He struggles with the idea that he's wanting to do good, but if he does good, then he's done wrong. And if he wants to do wrong, then he's done wrong. And if he wants to do good, and he just keeps going back and forth. Did you hear the whole circle around in that, that reading? I'm just glad I didn't have to do the reading. It was a circle. That battle rages for many of us. I battle rages for me inside all the time. I want to do what is right. Yet I keep doing what is wrong. I want to be the new self. Yet the old self keeps calling at me to be the old self, self-centered, thinking about me. But I want to do what is right. That's how I want to respond to this what if. All these things that we are given opportunities to respond to. So what if I allow my temptations of that old self? The self-satisfying, self-centered went out over the new self, the one that is looking towards Christ, looking about God's children. Jesus sends us a warning in the text that we actually skip today, Matthew. He speaks to an unrepentant people. Now, in this particular case, it's to multiple cities, but it applies to each and every one of us. It's not just about those cities, it's about us too. Jesus says in 24, but I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. Jesus sends us that warning. This is not the first warning, however, that we receive. The people receive that we receive. This is not our first warning, how our choices can have an impact not only now, but later on. Last week, when speaking of rewards in Matthew 10, Verse 40, Jesus responds, Jesus speaks of welcoming the disciples, and therefore welcoming Jesus and the Father. But the inverse of that is exactly true as well. That not welcoming the disciples is not welcoming Jesus and is not welcoming the Father. Now the consequences of that are also spelled out in the week before that. In Matthew 10, verses 32 through 33, Jesus says that the results of this not welcoming, denying Jesus, is also Jesus denying us before the Father. So now that I've given you all this gloomy news and all these choices of what ifs, it's probably pretty intimidating. And in fact, it can seem very damning. But there is good news. There is good news because the good news comes in the form of the cross. The cross held the redeeming, the redeeming love of God in Jesus Christ. The resurrected Jesus is the key for us for the answers to the what is. Jesus is no longer on the cross, but he is our answer. In Romans 7, 25 to 24, it says, Wretched man, and this is also women, wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, if hearing it from Paul in Romans is not enough for you, then let's hear what Jesus said. He says, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven 
and earth. Because you have hidden these things from the wise and from the intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for your, yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Jesus says it's not through the study of the Torah or anything else that we get this knowledge of how to answer to these challenges. We gain the knowledge through Jesus. And he tells us this when he says, All things have been handed over to me by the Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And here's the kicker. And anyone... He says, anyone, anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Jesus chooses to reveal to you, to me, us, the disciples. Jesus chooses us to know the way. Here is the what if that we can all answer. It applies to each and every one of us. It's one that we just cannot refuse if we recognize the gift in itself. You heard it today. Come to me. All that are weary and carry heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. If you tell me of somebody today, a single person, if you can tell me a single person in the world who has no burdens, is not weary from things that are going on in the world, then I can show you somebody that's in denial. Jesus doesn't judge us. Judge us for who we are. Jesus knows who we are, and that's why he wants to lessen our load. He wants to lessen the burden for us. He wants us to have a way to walk in what is that is lighter in the load. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you'll find rest. Rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. The yoke. The yoke to pull our heavy loads. Our own burdens is less than by the yoke of Jesus. The yoke is the answer. The answer to all the what is that we encounter each and every day. It leads to rest for our souls. It leads to rest for our souls because Jesus is both gentle and humble in heart. He takes compassion upon us. And he stands in front of us. Jesus stands in front of us at the time of judgment. He will be there in front of us. The what is, the what is answer is Jesus, the Son of God, who came into this world not to condemn the world, who came into this world not to condemn the world. God, to save the world from all who believe in so that they will not perish. Will not perish, but have eternal life. The yoke of Jesus is not condemning. The yoke of Jesus is free. The yoke of Jesus is saving us from all the what-ifs that we encounter in life. Amen.